Today's journey begins at Amble, on the Northumberland coast, where the River Coquit meets the North Sea. For 300 years, this small seaside town has been synonymous with one thing. Boats. 50 years ago, this harbour would have been filled with hundreds of traditional Cobal fishing boats. Today, just a handful remain. Northumberland has a strong history of boat building, but with most vessels now built from steel, the art of wooden boat building is in steep decline. But for the past few months in this tiny boat shed, Rob Angus and a team of local volunteers have been aiming to buck the trend. Rob, how are you doing? Rob, pleasure to, to meet you. Good to see you. How's the boat building going? It's coming on really well. Let's yeah. Come have a look. Oh, well. morning, lads. How are you? How are you? How are you? Good to see you. Absolutely. So this is our St. Isles skiff. Stunning. Yeah. It's kind of similar to the Cobalt design, but is it, it, how does it differ from other boat shapes? It's very similar to the Cobalt design. It, it's based on a, on a Fair Isle skiff, which is a traditional fishing vessel from the, the Shetlands and the Fair Isles. Mm -hmm. um, but they've all got their history steeped in Viking boats, and you can see on the lines on it, it's very similar to a Viking longship. This isn't the only community boat building project happening in the Northeast. Coastal rowing is an increasingly popular hobby, and next month, Rob and his team will race their boat against those of three other local towns. So our ship doesn't just have to look good, it needs to sail well too. So how's she looking, Rob? She gonna be ready for race day? We well, yeah, believe it or not, we've got just under four weeks to get this ready for the water, wow. including finishing it and painting it. Mm -hmm. um, it's looking good, it's on schedule. Right, time I got to work. Now, believe it or not, I was an apprentice at Swan Hunter Shipyard for four years. But today, my first job is making an oar. I mean, come on. Look at that. That is awesome. <laughs> Don't worry, lads, I'm here all week. You will be all right. <laughs> <laughs> Dozens of people have played a part in building this boat. Volunteers come from all walks of life, from teachers to fishermen and engineers. I tell you what, there is something really satisfying about building a boat from scratch. Most have no boat building experience whatsoever. Among them, business analyst Brian Miller. Now, Brian, before you joined the project, did you know anything about boat building? Absolutely nothing at all. Yeah. Um, you don't have to be an engineer, although thank the Lord we do have some. <laughs> but you, you don't have to be an engineer to be involved. Yeah. So um, if you are popping down, making tea, sweeping up and scraping a little bit, you're still part of something, and yeah. part of something pretty special. It's inspiring to see this project coming together. And for Rob, it's not just about community spirit. It's also helping preserve an important part of our coastal heritage. I started life as a fisherman. Uh, my grandfather was, was a cobalt fisherman, and I was at sea till I was in my early 20s. The difference between then and now, the Corbel fleet in Amble is quartered. There's no new ones being built at all. Um, the old ones are falling into decline and they're just gradually disappearing and it's a terrible shame. For me, this project, in, in, in some small way, it gets me back in boats, it gets me back on the water. Um, and it might be the forerunner to something bigger. See you on race day. Yeah. See you then. I'm off to the gym. Bring your muscles. I will. <laughs> Over the next four weeks, it's all hands on deck to get the boat finished in time for the big race. After two weeks hard graft, it's ready to be painted. Then it's the tricky job of getting it out of the shed. Uh, another three or four foot. Easy does it. Well done. And once the hard work is done, the locals get their first glimpse of the finished boat as it's taken down to the beach for a traditional naming ceremony. To aid you and keep you safe. Blessed with a drop of rum. I'll return to Amber later in the show to join Rob and his crew in the big boat race. Find out if our team can make it first past the finish line. Today's journey ends back where it started, Amble. It's the day of the big boat race. Rob Angus and his team of volunteers have built their own traditional wooden boat from scratch and are now ready to put it to the test against three other crews. I can't wait to see the result of all their hard work. How are you, Rob? Robson, how are you, mate? 
How's it going? Not so bad. Not so Good bad. To see you. I'm gonna come and see what we've built. Looks a little different to the last time you saw. Oh, you look at that. Doesn't she look beautiful? She is. I know I'm biased, but yeah, she's beautiful. This project has been a real labour of love for Rob, as he bids to revive an interest in traditional wooden boat building skills. And the colour? Is there any reasoning for that? I took a little bit of a liberty with that one, to be honest with you. Um, the colours is the same colours as my grandfather's coal, but used to be painted. The name, however, was, was voted for, and Corgut Spirit came to the top of the list. But it does embody what we're about. I mean, Corgut, obviously because of the river and the locality, mm -hmm. but the spirit that's been involved to get from the six sheets of plywood to this particular point has been awesome. Well, she looks beautiful, but how will she sail? Time to summon up that coquette spirit. Today, we're competing against three other teams from Gosforth, Blythe, and North Berwick. Like us, their wooden boats were made by volunteers in community projects, and each one's a real work of art. Hello, Robson. Hello. How are you going? I'm Mel. Nice to see you, Mel. Hi, I'm Jenny. Good Hi. to see you. It is a beautiful boat. So I've been at the gym five times a week, um, you know, training for this moment, this monumental moment today. How long, how long have you guys been going to the gym? Had cake you had cake yesterday. Uh -huh. So have you got a special name for your team? The A team. The A team. We sing as we row. You sing as you row. <laughs> the race will cover a distance of half a mile in Amble Harbour. There's local pride at stake here, so come on, Coquit Spirit. Three, one, two, three. Big ones! Big one! Come on! Come on! Commit! Commit! Coastal rowing races like these are becoming increasingly popular, particularly in Scotland and the northeast coast of England. Watch your timings. Watch the timing, everybody. In. In. All the clubs take it in turns to host regattas, and trust me, everyone wants to be the first past the finish line. The team from North Berwick have taken an early lead. Right, stick on, stick on. Stick in. Stick in. And at the turn, we're a good 10 yards behind in second place. Come on! <sighs> it's called Coquit Spirit! Let's see some! Come on, guys! Time to pick up the pace. Remember what you built it for. Despite our best efforts, we're pipped to the finish line by North Berwick, who are worthy winners. Well, we certainly gave it everything we had. Damn, we nearly got it. Oh. We may not have won, but there's a great sense of achievement seeing this boat take to the waves. It's a fantastic way to celebrate Amble's boat-building heritage. <laughs>